if, if we're comparing, let's say, street bike to a street bike, you know, a CBR 1000 or 900 from 20 years ago, our race bikes, um, like my 500s and SRs, they're very similar to this because we have really moved along in the mid 80s, late 80s into the 90s, um, building bikes that had good feel and good agility. And um, it's one of the things I definitely like about this new CBR is, um, for example, the 08 bike when I rode it and when I had the school, um, I liked it. And it was by far the most agile the CBRs had been built. This takes that one step further. Now, if we talk about the electronics, uh, the trash control, um, all the way into the active suspension, what has improved dramatically is it's not intrusive. The original electronics, what I didn't really like about it is the fact that it kind of took away some of the feel. And you could feel and it kind of interfered with that. And that is a huge improvement, in my, my opinion, over um, the previous generations, or certainly if we look at five, six years ago. So it's, it's, uh, it's coming along, you know. How do you, how do you feel about, uh, about the ABS? I mean, ABS has made a lot of improvements, and obviously yes. you're used to, to breaking on the limit of traction, yeah. you know, just by your front fingers. Mm. So how, how do you feel about the ABS? Well, it doesn't, it doesn't really so much interfere. It's another thing that's definitely made an a improvement. You know, before you get to that certain point, you feel the pulsing. And, uh, you know, with this, certainly you can get it to that point, Let's say the long straightaway here because of the going down in turn one. But once I get the bike over, it's not an issue at all. Uh, in fact, we can adjust as we will this afternoon. But we can adjust some of the suspension settings and things with the active suspension to to kind of balance that out because you know the ABS is is uh, based on pitching and sometimes movement beyond just the fact of locking up the front wheel or rear wheel, of course, rear brake. But it doesn't interfere with with my trail braking. You you always used to have your have your race bikes tuned to have like this real big hit of power high up, mm. so you could spin the rear and turn yes. the bike with that. Obviously, this bike is completely the opposite. It's all linear power. Do mm. you do you miss having that? Well, the big hit of power. Yeah, the thing is, you got to realize that back when I was racing two strokes, uh, I also raced four strokes, super bikes and things. So I've always had the adaptability that I could work around it. For example, uh, a bike that I like want to get it to rotate the rear, but it, I don't so much do it under power, I actually use the front brake the way I, I get the bike into the corner and then actually get the rear to come around under braking just a little bit. So it's, it can, you can manipulate it that way. And, you, uh, you get the rear to come around by yeah, using the front. Yes, by, by actually using the front brake. <laughs> Just because it's unloaded a little bit. Mark, Mark does that, actually. Um, I'll bet he does. Point, <laughs> but but the, the thing is, is that, um, you know, this actually get it to spin a little bit. You can turn the trash control down. I have the setting just at one, or you can turn it off, you know, too. But uh, I, I personally like smooth power. See, I'm a... I, at my core, I'm a, I'm a rider that it's about precision for me. It's one reason why I like a bike like this new CBR is because of the agility. If I'm out here, I like to be able to choose different lines. I like to be able to, I don't, I don't really counter steer. I use brake pressure, body movement to get the bike to, to change direction. Um, and so it gives me that option to be able to, um, you know, set the bike in certain places and get to do what I want to do. The, the wheelie control is built into the traction control. Mm. <clears throat> How do you, do you like, control wheelies or, or do you just leave it up to the electronics? No, I, like coming up over the rise on the front straightaway, I actually drag the front brake just a little bit. Can, the front brake or the back? I mean, excuse me, yeah. excuse me, rear brake. <laughs> yeah. Drag the brake a little bit. Yeah. Um, just, just slightly, you know, um, and short shifted, you know, in different places. Again, it, it's, I, I want some assistance, but as the rider, to be able to have the ability to be able to you yourself control some of it. It's one of the things that, you know, when people ask me, does it bother you? Do you, what do you, how do you feel about electronics? And it's very simple, is that as long as it's not intrusive, 
the first time I rode a bike, which was the original RCV Honda uh, Grand Prix by MotoGP bike, I said that the electronics could be the great thing, greatest thing for the average rider. Once they develop it to where it doesn't interfere with what we feel and our ability to have so that some control of it, as an assistant, it's not a bad thing. Am I glad that I came along when I was forced to learn to ride a bike where all the control was up to me? Of course. But as the bikes have evolved, and they certainly, with this bike, got a point where it's, it's great to have both of them. My feel, the bike's ability, and the feedback I get from in, and then some assistance with the electronics makes it, makes it easier. Right. The electronic oil in suspension takes away the need for the rider to understand damping. They can actually feel what the bike is yes, doing yes. and let the electronic suspension decide how it's going to adjust itself. How, how does that compare to the, the race bikes back in the old days? You didn't have data acquisition? Or no, anything. you, well, no. For so it was just, you'd, time, you'd say to Irv, hey, yeah. it's doing this. And yeah, this. exactly. We, you were the data acquisition. You know, when I was doing all the development bike work for, um, obviously for the 85 season, with the 250 and the 500. My ability to feel what it was doing and more importantly give them the feedback of what I believe the direction needs to go was critical because it'd be so it would have been so easy to go in the wrong direction with chassis stiffness or or you know uh, power delivery, things like that. Same thing with tire development. What it what is nice about this active suspension is is you're exactly right is that you can make changes in the general you can make uh, independent then changes under acceleration uh, with the rear you can make under braking if you get the braking more uh, to your liking how it transfers weight then you can actually then but you might say what's well, a little too high in the front now under braking as I begin to turn in, as the release of brakes turn in, you can then independently change the cornering to, to actually where it gives it a little more, um, it goes back down the stroke for the corner. So it, the suspension is actually changing its characteristic through the corner. Yes, and then, but then you still have the ability then to be able to adjust each independent, uh, to kind of personalize and fine tune it. Where the active, what it does, the range is amazing. You know, it might in in ten milliseconds or you know, that right. does, hundred times a second. Yeah, hundred times a second. It actually then it might go all over the range. You know, from plus let's say plus five on a setting, the stiffest all the way down to minus in a matter of you know a split second. And that is something that is a, is not a bad thing uh, as long as it doesn't interfere with what you feel. It has to be so subtle, and it also has to do it at the right time. And, uh, right. So and they're getting there with it. So you're a, you're a fan of the new bike? Yes, I, I really like the bike for multiple reasons. This on on Friday when I got here, I'd never been around uh, this course before here in, in Portimao, and uh, it's extremely um, tricky in certain areas, as you know, because you got a lot of blind entrances. And so there's a variety of different lines that you can take. And what I, what I like from a motorcycle is that I don't have to get to a certain speed for it to work. That it goes with me and, and I constantly know where it is at every level of that improvement in speed. And if I want to be like I'm, I'm showing y'all at, at this line here, because as we come off the corner, it's a downhill that goes into a left that loads. It's a motorcycle that I can change the entry line before I get to the downhill part because I want to run straight because it's a more efficient line. Not only that, is that because of the lay in the off camber areas, I want to be more straight up and down. If it wouldn't change direction when the way I wanted to, I'd have to change my line to a line that I really didn't prefer. And so I like that. I'm in that respect I'm extremely precise. Every place to get on the track is for a reason. Every line I take, every turn in, uh, and everything is for a reason. And so, but then as I pick up the pace, you know, you come in fourth gear on a downhill right, leaving on the front straightaway. I was I was behind Tito Rebet. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I'm running in there like a really, really deep, and I actually got in and drugged a little bit right, 
And then I just came back a little throttle and it just came right back and I didn't lose five feet, 10 feet. <laughs> so that's a, that to me is a nice motorcycle, you know, at that pace. Cause he looked back and he saw me there and he, he's going, okay, let's have some fun. So I, I, I ran with him a lap. Freddie, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem.